Hey everyone, uh, my screen says I'm live. If I can just get a comment to see if you all can hear me. Great, great, great. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started. I was uh, <clears throat> talking with Becky last week trying to th think about things that could help people out there, especially when they're getting started with CNC. Some of you I see, uh, like Brooks, I know you've been going at it a long time. And uh, hey, Dan. Uh, so um, others are fairly new, and they're always wondering what they can do. And so I've started making some things for the um, San Diego Fine Woodworkers Association. And... Um, found that some of the simplest stuff that we already have available to us is things that people are interested in. So I thought I'd just go over a couple ideas uh, that we get with our Vectric purchases. So if you're a Vectric user, you, uh, <clears throat> you have these already available to you and they're kind of fun and it's a good starter project or even a, uh, what I'll call a refresher project of having something fun to do with you and your family or to give away as gifts at birthdays or Christmases or other things. So there's a couple cool things that are in the library that everybody gets. And then there's a couple, depending on what packages you take when you buy it, you know, you get a couple free design and makes what might be available. So I thought I'd cover a couple of the common ones out there in a series of these lives. And I'll cover at least one tonight and then depending if it takes longer than I thought, we could we can look at some others, but uh, or I can answer questions. So let me just do the first one that I had in mind. Hey, John, nice to see you here. Um, and so uh, let's let me set up the screen here. Let's try this and see how this works. Let me take that banner off so it doesn't get in people's ways. Turn that off up there. You don't need to see my face up there in the corner. And um, at least I'm learning how to do some of those controls. So now let's take a look. And you're going to see my head turn to the side because I'm actually looking at another screen. And my camera's coming right out of my laptop. I will try to switch my camera over there, but uh, no guarantees that that camera is going to work. Hold on. Let's see what we can do. Okay, I just switched cameras, and uh, let me know if that works, and I'll be trying to keep an eye on the comments out of the corner of my eye. And so here is Vectric uh, V-Carb. I'm getting V-Carb because that's what's it seems most people have, and it's at least expensive. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to create a new file like we always do. And I'm just going to let it default to 12 by 12 by 1. And we could actually uh, change that in the future. I'm going to go off the material surface. And I'm going to uh, use the bottom left corner. Now, many times when I'm designing, I use the center and then I switch to the bottom left corner, but it's a, it's a error likely situation when you do that because you can sometimes forget to switch over here. And then when you go to cut it, it depending on what your habits are, you might find yourself having to restart your reset everything just as a heads up. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the material settings. Let's see what they are. Okay, Canadian maple, which is the default. That's fine. I don't need any uh, change in modeling resolution because I'm not going to actually be doing any modeling. And uh, so I will go ahead and hit OK. And uh, Dan uh, said, how do you have all those recent jobs on there? Well, the reason I have all the recent jobs on there is because I do a lot of playing around in this program. But if you're asking how do I physically get them all up there, and I think what you're talking about here, John, uh, Dan is, uh, you see, I've got 10 here. It defaults to four. So uh, if you want to change that, all you have to do is come up here to the edit. And then we're going to scroll down here over to the options. 
And in the options, there's all kinds of cool tricks that you can do. Uh, if you're not familiar with that menu, get familiar with it. And one of the things that you can do here is under, I think it's general settings. Yep. So under general settings, I think these the uh, recent file list is set at four or five as a, as a default. And the recent font list has got the same thing, four or five. Well, I like to keep a list in front of me. So I up that to 10 and I think that's the max I can put under there. And because uh, I would have probably made it more if I could. And so I put 10 there and then I hit OK. And I, you may have to close uh, the file down before you see it. But um, then when I go to look at my recent files, I have a much bigger selection there of things that I can pick from. Hope that answers the question. So <clears throat> now let's go to the clip art that we all get with our um, software. And uh, the one I wanted to focus on, which I'm doing a lot of, which are, are, are fun for family and gifts, are these small little uh, games right here. And I've gone through making a cribbage board before. And if somebody wants to see me do that in the future, I will. But let's just look at the template. So if you go over here to Peg Solitaire, this is the one that I've been producing right here. So if I double click on it, you see it comes out into uh, the project. Now, here's what it looks like. Of course, um, as would happen, um, my kids have... Uh, lost some of the pegs already so i'll have to make some more they're simply golf pegs that i i cut down with a little jig on my bandsaw so some of you remember that game from cracker barrel or restaurants a uh, fun little uh game that can keep your mind active and the goal of the game is to make it so that there's only one peg left when you're all said and done that's that's how you win it so so this is the game and it's right here, already there for you guys to cut. All you have to do is set up the tool pass. Now let's see what we got here. Uh, my game already came with layers. So if you go and look at the pegs, that's the holes right there. They call these V grooves, which are decorative grooves. And they call this a profile cut, which is your outside cut. So it's very simple to go ahead and use this thing and cut it out real quick and have your game, and then all you have to do is get the golf picks. When we look at this, these holes are, let me ungroup those. I'm going to leave them on this uh, groups layer here and make sure they go to the right spot. All right. So they're still there. That's good. Because they came in layered, I wanted to make sure I had the layers down right. So now, if we look here real quick, all we have to do is set up tool pass. But I wanted to point out one thing that I found when I was making this project. And if we go over to the size, we'll see that they've got these holes cut at 0.25, which might be fine for you. That's a bigger peg. A, a normal golf tee that I use is typically more around uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I like to change these for me to 3 16ths of an inch, plus I have a, a core pilot bit or a drill bit that's that size. But you can make them whatever size you want. So what I would do then is I would come in here and I would turn off the V grooves and the profile just to make it easier. I will then select them all. And I'm going to come up here to scale items individually. Notice this was something that happened in VCarve upgrade 11.0, I think. It's an awesome, awesome tool. And so if you select scale items individually, you can see that it's going to do all of the items that we selected as an individual. Now, remember, I said mine is 3 divided by 16. And I typically use the math function. I had the XY link there, 0.1875, and I hit apply. And now all of those have been shifted to be uh, 3 16 inch holes, which will align with what 
uh, my bit will do. Now, obviously, if you wanted to, my bit is going to be drilling, but if you wanted to use an upcut bill, remember you're, you're drilling, so you don't want to use a downcut bit. But if you wanted to use like a one eighth inch or a quarter inch end mill, you can do that. Uh, you don't want to use a downcut bit because it can cause a fire. But in the end, we'll, we'll get to that. So then I'm going to hit close. They're now all been adjusted. Let me check one more time to make sure they're on the right layer. Yep, they didn't change layers, so that's good. I'm going to turn on all the layers. And now I've done everything to this that I need to do to be able to cut this on my CNC if I want to do the whole thing on the CNC. Or I can do one other thing and line it up so that I can then burn these grids onto the uh, back. I mean, burn these grids with my laser if I want and do a batch of them. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's set up the tool pass. So we're going to go to the tool pass. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to cut out the peg holes. I am going to use a drilling tool path. And that's because I have this 3 16 inch core drill bit. Now I'll go to select. I bought this one from a man of tools uh, a while back. I use it all the time for cribbage boards because that's what the firefighters that I make cribbage boards like. They like the bigger uh, pegs. I also have a 1 8 inch drill bit that I bought from IDC uh, Woodworks, I think it's called, that uh, Garrett Fromm's thing. Uh, I bought a 1 8 inch drill bit for smaller cribbage boards that aren't as deep. And so I use either a 3 16 inch or a 1 8. 1 8 is more the common or regular size boards, as those of you that make them know. So I'm going to keep the 3 16 inch. And I don't really have any concerns about pass depth when I'm using that bit. I've got 0.5, but I can go all the way up to 1. That bit, uh, I talked with um, a man of tools, and they told me it's an 8,000 RPM bit. So I need to make sure that I looked at that. Everything's good. Hit select, and now I have uh, the right bit chosen. I don't need to use peck drilling with this bit because it can go straight down in, so I don't need to peck and peck and peck. And uh, so, hey, Aton, uh, so I don't need to use peck drilling. I can just I can just drill it straight with this bit. Now, if I was using a different type of bit where I needed to use peck drilling, I would cut do that. And then uh, we would set that up for peck drilling. If anybody wants to know more about that at some time, let me know and I can talk about it. And I don't need to dwell at the bottom. I'm just going to drill the holes. I don't uh, need to use the vector selection. And I don't need to project it on any 3D model. So I'm just, for me, I'm just going to put pegs here so I know which path that is. And, oh, look at that. I forgot to select them. So I've got to come up here, and I like to select by layers. So I'm going to select the peg holder, peg holes, hit close. Now I'm going to hit calculate. And now we preview it. You can see we've got the peg holes drilled. That simple. So the next tool path we want to set up is going to be the grids. So let's look at the grids and how we might want to do that. You'll notice that if you look at the grids, they're under something called V grooves. So that's what they expect you to use when they put it together. But it's not the V carved toolpath. Don't get thrown off because it says V grooves. You are actually going to use the profile toolpath. And you're going to decide how deep you want these to uh, actually be. And so uh, in this case, I usually like somewhere around 0.05 to 0.1. I'm just going to put 0.1. And I am going to go on. So I want to be on the line. And I arbitrarily pick the 0.1. You could pick 0.05, whatever depth you're comfortable with. You could put that in there. And then... I don't need to do a separate last path. I don't need to do a ramp. I'm going to select. 
And this time, I don't want to hit close vectors. I got to hit open vectors because each of those lines are open. I want to select the V grooves, associate with toolpath, hit close. And now I'll call them lines. I should be able to carve the lines in between each of those little toolpaths. So we hit preview this. And that is what that looks like. Now I want to see what it's going to look like with a, um, a color. I can simply apply, let's say, black to that. And it shows you what it's going to look like. And to me, that's a pretty deep one. And that's because instead of selecting a V bit like I was going to, I got in a hurry and I selected a 1 8 inch ball note. So let's redo that. And I'm going to select, let's uh, go with a, I'm going to go with a 30 degree V bit. Hit select, hit calculate. I'm going to reset the preview. I'm going to preview both of them. Now that's more like what I was looking for. All right. So now I've got the grids in and I've got the next thing I want to do is I want to, for me, I want to make a round over here and I've got a video out on that. So I need to go pick a round over bit. So the next toolpath I'm going to do is a profile toolpath. And the round over bit uh, that I like is 0 0.375 inches deep by its profile. And I'm going to select a round over bit I have in my, in my uh, tool database. It's 2052, which is a White House round over. I'm going to select that. I got 3.375 pass depth, like I said. Hit select. Make sure I set the spindle speed right. It's already right in there. And now I need to change this to an outside right. And if you've looked at um, the... Uh, the round over tools in the past, I think uh, Mark Lindsay covered this a little while ago. I have a video on it, how to use the round over tools. Uh, if we look at one real quick, let's just see if I can. This will not be to scale, but I'm just trying to get a quick look. So as you know, <coughs> the round over bit has a profile that goes something like that. So <coughs> the, you need to offset that so that this part of the shaft, in my case, it's not a point round over. This is a flat plunge round over. So I have to offset it so that this shaft is what's running uh, along here, and then that will create the profile. So what I need to do in my case is I need to put a minus 0 0.25 offset, all right? Conventional or climb, either one will work. Um, and I could ramp it. So let's ramp it, and I like to use twice the distance, so I'll put 0 0.5. Hit calculate. Well, let me, before I do that, I need to get the profile. Let me put round over here. I'm going to come in here to open vec close vector because I'm going to be using that profile vector that goes around. Hit close. So I'm using this vector that's on the profile there to do this round over. One more time, 0.375. Outside, offset, 0 0.25. Hit calculate. Let me go over here 
And one of the tools I like to use is this solid tool. And it tells me that I'm going 0.25 in with an offset for this round over. Now, if I had gone the opposite way, let me just show you real quick. If I had forgotten to put the minus sign in front of there, which is a common mistake, and I hit calculate, and I come over here to the 2D profile, notice how the cut is completely off of that profile line. So that's how you can tell if you might have made a, an error in how you put your offset of minus or plus, if that makes sense. So we'll go back here and rechange that to minus. Hit calculate. Oop, I didn't mean to hit reset preview. And we're going to hit preview all tool paths now. And you can see now that we have a round over. And it's nice and smooth. And I know that round over will be nice and smooth because I've used it many times. That's why I like that bit. I'm very familiar with it. Now, I could have used a point round over tool, but because I know this one works so, so nice for me, I tend to like to use this one. The next thing that I can do now is to cut this thing out. So the next part is to do a profile tool. Path. And I want to go, I like to go to Z. And if I'm not holding uh, the board down, then I'll need to put tabs in it. But when I cut these, I actually use the blue tape and CA glue trick to hold my boards down. So I didn't need to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a 1 8 inch. I could use a quarter inch or something else. Uh, I tend to use this 1 8 inch when I when I can because I really set this up when I was cutting it with multiple of these um, games. I was cutting out five at a time. So I wanted to keep the spacing as close as I could to each other. So I'm going to go outside of the tool path. I'm not going to add tabs, although I could have done that. I am going to go ahead and put a ramp in a 0.25 twice the diameter of my bit, hit calculate, and now I will preview the visible tool path, and we have a game. All we have to do is go cut the pegs. Now, do any of you want to see how I would then take this to my laser and set it up on the CNC so I could actually take it to my laser. Um, do you plan on doing like a combined? And what I did, what I wanted to show that I did, let me show a picture. The reason I took it to my laser was because I wanted to do more than actually just burn these uh grid lines. I wanted to put a, uh, a brand, a logo, or in this case, the San Diego Fine Woodworkers suggested that I will go ahead and put the rules for the game on the back. So I did that. So let me, I see John said, sure, go ahead and show that. I just want to be conscious of everybody's time. So here's how I would do that. And of course, this is a real quick and dirty. Uh, I would have taken now at this point, I would take a, a square with square edges, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a square around this one. And I'm going to show you on the laser what it looks like. I actually did three of them at a time or more. So I hit close. And so now what I've done is before I cut this out, I'm going to bring this back. Um, well, never mind. Uh, so I'm going to actually set up this so that it's uh, perfectly square. And I'm going to then have this grid line so that I know where the actual um, 
solitaire game is. So now once I have that, I can carve that slightly. I'm going to add another profile. And uh, let me put this on a different layer. I'll rename this layer to alignment grid. All right. And so now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to scribe like I did previously. I'm going to just get, let's say, 0 0.1. And I'm going to select the V bit like I did before. And then I'm going to go ahead and put that on the profile, 0 0.1, on the profile. I'm going to go ahead and select the alignment grid, take it off here, hit close. And I'm going to put this alignment calculate. Reset preview. And now I'm going to, I would have actually moved this up in the toolpath if I would have known I was going to do this. And now I will preview all of the tool paths. So now you see I've got this tool path here that I can now use for uh, aligning this in the future. And let me show you what I mean by that. You close, go back to now. What you will notice, I did want to point out that this, ha this has been cut all the way through. So if you, if you double click on that, it's going to go away. But you don't care about that right now. So we'll go back to the 2D view. Let me just delete this so it doesn't confuse us. So uh, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this whole grid and the uh, solitaire game. And you can do this for anything. And I'm going to go over here to File, Export as a SVG. All right, did it disappear under one of my screens? Let's try this one more time. Sometimes it'll, yep. Yeah. See if I can figure out where it went here. All right, so there we are. It just popped up. So I'm going to say solitaire template just for kicks so that we can have that. And I'm going to put that in a place where I can find it. So we'll hit save. So now I have that SVG. So now the next thing I do is I'm going to switch over to my now, if you're wondering about some of the strange screens, I am actually using a MacBook with my computer. So um, some of the things may look just a little bit different, but it all runs the same. Morning, Bill Coleman. Uh, so now I've got my um, light, light burn up. telling me there's a newer version. Do I want to update? And I said, no. So I've got my light burn up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that vector. That I saved.
Okay, where did I put it here? It was in here. There we are. Okay, solitaire game template, hit open. So now what I have is I have a picture in my light burn where I know that board will actually be. So what I can do is I can set and make a template in Lightburn by using a piece of cardboard or other tool to actually be able to see where that is. So what I do then is I see if I can find a picture of it. Of course, now that I decided to wander off, I'm not finding a picture of it. Give me a minute. What you're looking at right here is, I call this my, making templates Okay, let's see if you can see this now. Um, and of course, it disappeared as soon as I put it on the screen. Lines look pretty good, a little light standing and they'll be clean. All right, so what I'm showing you here is um, I'm showing you the, the actual template that I built by taking that grid, and I actually had three of them, and I made that template in my laser. And then because I had that template, I was aligning. Oh, pretty good, a little light thing. It's a... Uh, See if I can find a better picture of it. First thing I do is I'll square this up and uh, frame it. Okay, so there you are. Now, instead of putting those bull's arm marks now, in these days, I just put a square around it. And so I uh, made a template by putting a square. And so then as long as I know that I have this lined up along the edge, then wherever I put this actual solitaire board, either the front side or the back side, within Lightburn, I know exactly where it is. And that allows me then to engrave the front lines or the back lines by building that template. And the key thing is, is this actual grid line, if that makes sense. So, what I could do then is if I wanted to do multiple ones of these and I wanted to make the template longer, the only thing that's key is this square right here and this profile cut have to be 
not changed as far as the alignment up and down and on the left. So if I want to make a template now out of cardboard or another piece of wood, all I do is move this out. Then I can take and I can, I'm going to group it real quick to make it easier. And I'm going to hit Control D, which is a duplicate, move it. And then I can hit the period key. I can flip it back over. And now I can go along as long as I have this spot up here aligned right here in the corner. And this spot down here in the corner, and I make sure that my template that you saw previously. First thing I do is I'll square so that's why you saw me see top here. As long as I make sure that this square, this square are aligned or a square over here once I've made the template, wherever I put these boards in here, then I know that it's going to cut perfect. And I can make as many as I want, front or back. Does that make sense? Any questions about that? Any comments, any questions? Does it make sense? Is that clear to everybody what I'm doing? Look pretty good, a little light stand. I made a template for those storyboards for the okay. Mark, thank you. Said it makes perfect sense. I was I just cut round over. So anyway, that's that's basically what happens, and this video here. Cut round over. Showing you uh, that I'm cutting the round over in this version where I was cutting two of them out and how smooth the round over bit works. And I'm not sure how to make it go fast speed. But you can see how, the, how well that round over works. All right. Are there any other questions about that element? I'm going to go ahead and close down Lightburn real quick. And let me go back over here. So that's just one of the games. Let me go ahead and delete this file, delete this uh, picture. And so what I wanted to point out real quickly and trying to honor your time is, if you go look at other game layouts, you can see there is an, if you didn't already realize it, there's an oval cribbage board. There is a regular cribbage board. There is a round cribbage board. And it's even got a molding toolpath up here on it. There's a peg solitaire game that is actually a square version of what we just did. And last but not least, there's a tic-tac-toe version game. Those are all quick wins that you can do and make games for your family. I just wanted to make sure everybody, uh, if they haven't explored their clip art, was aware of that. Uh, let's see here. Brooks, would you ask me? Hey, Rob, what are your favorite woods to laser? You know, um, Brooks, my favorite woods to laser... I like maple, I like ash, and then uh, the darker woods I'm not as fond of because they tend to get really deep. And the other thing is that they uh, they don't always show the 
etching that I want as well as I want because they blend in. Another uh, really nice wood that I like to laser is uh, mahogany. African mahogany turns out really nice. So I like that wood. So one, one other thing I think I'll show you because it seemed to be pretty popular in the past when people, when I was putting it up is it, to, to know that I recently did a flag with an Eagle. Actually, I've done several of them. This just won a, a prize in the uh, San Diego fair or Del Mar fair is carving this Eagle. And I placed this Eagle onto this board with dowels and, and glued it down. So let me show you where that's at in the design and make library. So if you go to modeling, oh, if you go to drawing and clip art, I mean, and you go to design and make, if you actually have the, um, Wildlife scenes deep in the wild. That was one that I picked. Now you've got you've got clip art all over in your design and make. And so this is the eagle that you just saw on that flag when I started. So if you want to make that eagle, just drag it out here, or you could have double clicked on it. And of course, if you were actually going to do this. Uh, you could make the material closer to the size you want. My eagle was about 10 inches in length or 9 inches in length. And this eagle, if you look at it, is uh, actually, and I'm using B-Carve, not Aspire, for this project. If you look at it, the eagle, uh, the rectangle outside size of it is about 5 inches by about 6 inches. So x five inches, Y, six inches. When I did mine for my flag, I simply made this about uh, nine inches, I think. I left the link X, Y there, auto scale Z, hit apply, and that's what I did. So I'm going to go back to what the default one is. So when you look at this, hit close, this is what gets brought in. I'm going to go ahead and set this in two. And so this is what it looks like. No reason to put a zero plane on there because you're, um, you're coming up and not going down. And so the way I carved this was pretty simple and straightforward. And I'm going to use the five inch version versus the nine inch. And the time for carving wasn't that dramatically different. So I've got all these old tool paths that were set up for that other, because I, I didn't close it all out. So we're going to delete all tool paths. And so now I have the Eagle here. So the first thing I want to do is to make uh, the carving process simpler. So I'm going to go into the, click on the Eagle. I'm gonna go to the modeling tab. I'm going to hit this right here, which says create vector boundary around the model and so now you can see right here hopefully you can see there is the vector boundary for that eagle the next thing i want to do is i want to offset that boundary by about 0.25 inches hit offset and all i'm doing is giving myself a boundary for carving but I'm not going to delete the original vector because I'm going to use that to uh, cut the eagle out. So hit close. So I cut, now I've got everything set up for carving the eagle. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I like to take a look at what I'm dealing with. And so we've got the thickness of the material I set at one inches. The model or the eagle is about 0.5 inches deep. And uh, so that looks fine. There's plenty of material. 
And if I wanted to, I could put it in the middle, but I will just make it a little below the start. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure there is nothing, uh, no flat edges here on top of the eagle. So I'm going to make sure that this thing carves and actually carves down just a little bit from there. I'm actually fine with the clearance and the plunge dip. I'm going to hit OK so I know the eagle will fit in there. I also know that there's going to be about 0.58 inches, uh, 0.4157, I should say, inches below the eagle. So I've got two choices. I could have made this material actually uh, 0.6 inches thick before I started, or I can leave uh, that bottom being that thick. Now, I probably wouldn't leave that bottom being that thick myself. My eagle was actually about an inch to an inch and a quarter thick when I, when I made it bigger. But just so you know, you would have probably changed this material. Uh, and I'm going to do that up here. Let's do that just, just because 0.55. And of course, you'd have to really change the material. <laughs> so uh, now I'm going to look at the model. And I'm going to just put a slight gap above it. 0.04 inches. And hit OK. And now I'm all set to set up my tool path. The first tool path that I want to set up is going to be the roughing tool path. And I'm going to use selected vectors. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. And then I'm going to select this outside vector. Allow 0 0.04 machining allowance. And I like to use a Z level when I'm doing these kind of cars, I don't need to rent my plunge move. My plunge move and my uh, tool is being um, controlled, <coughs> excuse me, by my end mill. And if I come up here to my end mill, you can see that its diameter is 0.25 inches. Its path depth is 0.125 inches. Now, if I was actually setting this up, let me select one of my actual end mills that I would use. So if I was doing that, I would actually pick this end mill. You can see its path depth is 0.25. Hit select. And then I, I would hit calculate because now uh, the plunge depth and all of that is controlled by the tool data. That's not true with the actual um, finishing cut, but that is true with the roughing cut. So I'm going to hit calculate. And now you can see that uh, there's some area still left on top because I've left a 0 0.04 for the uh, roughing cut. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up the finishing. And I'm going to use a turbine... Uh, a tapered ball nose that I have. It's a 1 8 inch tapered ball nose. It's pretty heavy duty for a 1 8 inch bit. It's one that I picked up from uh, Rip Precision Tools. I've used it several times. You can see that it's actually uh, 2 inches flute depth, so it can get down deep. The only thing I have to worry about is how deep the carb is so that I don't hit the collet on the side, and we've got plenty of room for that. Uh, it says pass depth 0.125 inches, but remember that the pass depth here doesn't matter because it's going to be controlled by the finishing tool path, and it's going to go to the deepest location first. So for however we set it up. And so now <laughs> we've hit selected vectors. I like to do a raster, and my wood grain I like to set in a 90 degree. So I like to do raster, and I'm going to put down 90 degrees. And we went to the selected vectors. I'm going to hit calculate. And now you can see that the whole eagle is covered. Let's go ahead and preview both tool paths. And then the last thing I want to do 
is I want to actually cut out the eagle. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, Z. Now, if I want to, let's see here. Let's go. Let me cancel this for a second. Go back to the preview. If I look here, you will see that the depth down there in the corner is 0 0.5413. 0 0.5413. You see that down over here? Look in this corner. All right. So now I know that's 0 0.5413. Let's go back to the profile toolpath. I'm going to go to 0 0.5. I'm actually going to use and go down to Z, <coughs> which will cut, cut it out. I'm going to use a smaller end mill. I'm going to use a 1 8 inch end mill. I'm going to hit calculate. It's starting at 0.5 inches. And it says it's going to take me <coughs> five passes to get through it because it's going uh, at a nice, easy uh, rate. I'm going to go outside. I'm not going to worry about a ramp. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and put a ramp in, 0.25. I'm going to select this vector now. And I'm going to say cut out. I'm going to hit calculate. So hit cancel. It says it's going to go one inches. That doesn't make sense. So let me see what I've got here. Oh, there's where I screwed up. Up here, I want to put Z minus 0 0.5. Then I hit calculate. And that will set it up so that I just go down. And let me, let me see up here. I wanted to show you I jumped too quick. That's only going to be one pass, okay, because most of it's already cut out. Now I hit preview on that. Double click, and there's our eagle. Let's see if it'll let me get rid of that little piece. Yep. So there's our eagle. There'll be a little cleanup here in the sides. But that eagle then will be the same eagle. Just a little bit smaller that I showed you right there. All right. And if you are curious, because I know this is a question Mark gets asked all the time on his lives, the normal question is, how long will that take to car? So if you believe Vectric, that's only going to take about 30 minutes to car. And I will tell you that my larger Eagle only took me a little over an hour, hour and a half to car, uh, two hours at the most, and it was about twice this size. So that's uh, not surprising. So you can carve that eagle if you wanted pretty quickly. And I used walnut, as you saw, and I liked the way it looked. Let's go back to it. And the detail, the detail actually turns out pretty nice, as shown in this version. I think that uh, you get a little more detail uh, for my version because it's bigger and it's thicker. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish, that's another project. If you have the Eagle already in your uh, arsenal based on what you purchased <clears throat> when you got your VCAR program. Good to see more risks for us new to CNC folks. I met you at the Vector meeting at San Diego and watched a few of your videos. Oh, good to see you, Dennis. Thank you for thank you for, for joining. Uh, okay, so those are the things I was going to go through. <clears throat>
it's almost an hour. I want to respect your time, but I also want to open up for any questions that you might have that you would like me to answer. Uh, Robert asked, how thick is it on the flag? That one is a little over one inches thick. I carved it using uh, 1.25, so it's about 1.1 inches. I carved it using a uh, 1.25 inch thick stock. Any other questions? Anything about epoxy or the laser? There's a 30 second delay, so if it looks like I'm a bird staring at the screen, I am just wanting to make sure I give people a chance. Okay, with that, I appreciate your time. I would like some, uh, if you can do me a favor, and uh, if you can, uh, if you like this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up after I post this thing. But more importantly, if you thought it was worth your time, please uh, give me a comment that lets me know I should do more of these. Or if you thought it was uh, just a bore and the topic wasn't worth spending a, an hour of your life, which you'll never get back uh, on. Let me know that also. Uh, I'm trying to determine whether it's uh, going to help people by doing these live sessions. And uh, if you have uh, things that you would like me to cover in a live session, either on the CNC or the laser or with the epoxy, uh, send me an email at robsandstromdesigns at gmail.com. It's uh, on my about page of my YouTube channel. You can direct message me at Instagram. And if there's something you would like me to share, please let me know. And uh, a, uh, I'd be glad to help and answer in any way. All right. With that, all of you have a great night. And I'll let you go do your things for the evening, those of you who have supper and other things. And I appreciate you spending the time you did with me. And again, let me know in the comments what you think about future shows and whether uh, there's anything specific you would like to see. Thank you. Have a good night.